Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Tipsy Ghosts. We're your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. It is time. I love it. this. Okay. Time for what? <laughs> okay. I have big news. <gasps> yes. Basically, I felt that the Enneagram 4 was not fitting my personality anymore. And I was like, something's wrong here. So you took it again, didn't I you? I took it again. <laughs> In fact, I took it three times. Stop it, because I have put you into the box of the fours. Be prepared to have your mind blown. Oh, my goodness. I took it three more times. Okay. On different times, different days, so I don't remember the questions. Okay. And did you get the same answer all three all times? All three times, but not a four. Guess. She knows, so she can't guess. Ooh, this is fun. Yeah, I guess. No, because everything I thought I knew about you was a lie. Um, okay, okay. Hold on. Does this help? It's There's a wing four. The wing four helps. Um, mm. I'm going to say you are a five. I'm a five. I got it. Okay. I'm going to need some time to process this. <laughs> <laughs> So I can best know how to send you memes and um, okay. I need to know how to how I knew this would affect you oh like gosh. to the core. And so she has short circuited. <laughs> yes. What do I do with my hands? You are telling the psych person yeah. that your personality test was wrong. Yes, it was wrong. You know what though? I don't think it is. It was wrong initially. I can see the five. I can yes. see traits of the four with you. Uh-huh. Because so we talked about four. this. Yeah. My husband is a four. So like I see similar traits and characteristics, but I can see how you are a wink four now. Uh-huh. I do have friends who are fives, so we can make this work still. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> are you considering otherwise? It was up no. in the air for a while. I no. felt it. I need, I do need you to wanna, read. Do you want to explain what the five is? I need to read up on it. Um, I know that they are like the intellectuals, like you value intelligence and um facts and like it sounds bad being right but nope that sounds right <laughs> i work with her that's right <laughs> like that thing sounds to be. like a stuck up thing but it's not <laughs> like you take pride in in your knowledge and what you know that's true <laughs> it's funny how you guessed it and you said yeah i could see that <laughs> Like, you, like I'm a, uh, I know, I think, I don't though, like, know everything. And no, I know it's that. not. Like, you like to know things. So, you're I do curious like to know. about yes, things. That is so true. like how researcher. you are with history and research. That's why I was, yes. okay. <laughs> a lot of negative things going on in the five world. I feel like every single one of them have negative things because when you first got yours, you saw all the <laughs> negatives on it's it. Fives and sixes are there really. There is nothing but negatives. <laughs> you were the loyalist. You value am, loyalty. That is I am huge. a terrified person. That's <laughs> what I hear. Anxious. I'm scared <laughs> of everything. I'm scared you of life. You value security <laughs> and you are loyal. That is a very good quality. That is true. That's why like anxiousness is, your, is like your fear because you value security and stability. Mine is peace. It's like, I hate conflict. I'm like, ah, stay away from me. <laughs> the peacemaker. So I'm looking to see what you value. So you value knowledge. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you feel? Well, at first I was like, this is not right. <laughs> I'm reeling. So how do no, you that's feel? How I, I was like, this is not right. So I read through these things. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? This is actually spot on. <laughs> this is right. If I really, if I'm really being honest with myself, like mostly at work, it's my favorite thing to be is right. Um, and most of the time I am. You want to know how the subject. world works <laughs> and like why things yes. are the way they are. That is true. So you like to ask the questions and then you look it up. Yes. Yep. I can see that with you. Okay. Now here's the one thing I don't agree with. Uh, five say that they're very shy and I am a pretty introverted person. Like I would much rather be home and charge my social battery that way. I don't know that I'm like a typically shy person, but here's what I will also say. When I was younger and growing up, I was super shy. Yeah. So being outgoing has been like a learned behavior. Like I've taught myself how to do that because I don't like being so shy to the point where it's like debilitating. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Like Boyston. I knew she was going to say something. So happy for you. I knew she was going to say that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's enlightening. Introvert and extrovert, it's not about like whether you're sociable or whether you're outgoing or whatnot. Or your people skills. It's just about where you get your energy from. Yep. And so like I can be sociable and outgoing and like I am on all the time when I'm at work and stuff like that. But I need time to gain my energy back. Oh, same. Yeah. But like you said, it's learned behaviors. I have learned how to be outgoing and Correct. how to like talk to people because 
I literally talk to people for a living. That's what I do. <laughs> Can I give you some of your good qualities? I feel oh, like you need to hear do. these as an Enneagram we sex. We need to hear it. That's so sweet. I okay. would love to. You are reliable. That's true. Hardworking. Yep. Responsible uh-huh. and trustworthy. And you are an excellent troubleshooter. All those things are true. These are all true. So good there job. you go. Focus on the strengths. Stop looking at the negatives that you're an anxious person. I'm a problem solver, <laughs> damn it. I'll solve your problems. <laughs> you are a problem solver. That is true. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you feel better? I do feel better. Okay, good. I do also realize that um, if I can predict the future of like the worst thing that could possibly happen, I would. Well, sixes are catastrophizers. Yeah. It's a real problem. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought it was normal behavior to like think of a, like if you have a problem coming up and it's going to be uncomfortable. So like uh, think about just only the worst case scenario so that like if something good happened, then you'd be pleasantly surprised. It's normal to me. I thought that was normal. And see, so you try to figure out all of the information about it. <laughs> oh, so yeah. You can so know you everything can about yourself. it. Yeah. And I'm a dissociator. So I just do not think about it at mm. all. And if it happens, it happens, but I'm just not going to think about it. But if I don't, it doesn't exist. Yeah. She wants to know everything about it. I do. I want to know know how to get around it and, and like I want to anticipate it and you want to know nothing i want to know that i want to pretend like it doesn't exist <laughs> and i'm going to come over here and read my books and <laughs> if reality happens it happens Th- this all checks out actually <laughs> all right so i'm going to read you guys a story it is a smorgasbord smorgie smorgie smorg <laughs> i'm gonna start by reading you a dramatic reading of a part of a poem <laughs> By Alfred Lord Tennyson. Al Tenny. Al Tenny. <laughs> <laughs> the tea pain of his time. Lord Al Tenny. <laughs> Tenny. <laughs> Tenny. Lord Tenny. <laughs> like, saying it fast. Tenny. Uh, yeah, him. <laughs> um, again, this is just a portion, okay? Below the thunders of the upper deep. Far, far beneath the abysmal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the kraken sleepeth, faintest sunlights flee. As a special request from our friend Boydston, I have researched the kraken the for kraken. you. The kraken! Thank you! How many times mm-hmm. are you going to say release the kraken? Just once. Release the kraken! Thank you. <laughs> Fun fact, up until recently, I was told by you guys that the kraken's not real. Do you want to know how I found out that the Kraken wasn't real? I googled I for- it. I forgot this conversation that you legit thought this was a sea creature. I did. I was like, oh yeah, giant squid. Of course, that's real. Why giant would- squid is real. Why wouldn't it be? Turns out the Kraken is may- maybe, maybe not. We don't know. A cryptid. Mm-hmm. Well, he ain't real. <laughs> we had to break that to Boydston. I told you I, I wasn't sure either. Believe it. I had to Google it, and long time ago, by a long time ago, I mean like a year to two. Ago. Oh, you guys, I and love I like, you. I mean, is the Kraken real? <laughs> That's a silent Google. I don't tell people th- about everything. It's like incognito mode. Yeah, we're like, oh, nobody needs to look at this. Nobody history. needs to know if I really wasn't sure. Yeah. Turns out I was confidently <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> See, that's the difference. I will look it up usually and see it's because you're five <laughs> that's what i'm saying okay anyhow yeah we're gonna talk about the kraken I and love this. you know the kraken is a really old story an old legend so it's kind of simpler s- simpler similar to K- krampus where like there's lots of stories that come from this and we don't know which one's really true they're all probably true i don't know but basically the kraken is an enormous sea monster it is similar to a squid or octopus and has been said to appear in the sea somewhere between Norway and Iceland. Also, you're welcome. For Norway? For a Norwegian folklore story. Thank you. Norse legend says that the Kraken was the largest monster in the sea. The name Kraken is derived from the Norwegian word kraka. I don't know how to pronounce it. K R A K. K-E. Kraka. Okay. Like that. Uh, which in English translates to malformed or overgrown crooked tree, which I don't know why they have one word and we have six. Because English is the worst language. 
We're like, we're not sure. It could be overgrown, kind of crookedish tree. And they're like, Kraka. Seems more simpler. Kraka. <laughs> Our language sucks. <laughs> Basically. Kraka originates from the Old Norse word kraki, which means hook. And fun fact, over time, the word kraka was associated with any crooked tree that had been severed from its stem or trunk or anything that had been made from the tree, such as anchors or drags. They'd call them all crackas. Different countries had their own spin on this word, and they all kind of called it different things. But eventually, we landed on the word kraken, which is the German word for octopus. That makes sense. It does translate. Although in some of the the stories I saw them say that it's a German word for dragon. But when you like translate and Google translate, it says octopus. The Kraken has also gone by several different names over the years, which are listed in Danish. Steve. It's me, Steve and Chuck. (laughs) (laughs) He rises out of the water. Hey guys, it's Steve. My name is Steve. (laughs) Steve the Kraken. (laughs) You want to tour with me? <laughs> My name's Steve. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it disappears under the water. We should have been in charge of naming <laughs> cryptids. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know why we're not a part of somebody's marketing team. <laughs> That's what I don't know. We are acronyms, clever. All the acronyms we come up with. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, okay, well, here's the English versions of those Danish words. It's harrow, sea harrow, sea rake. Craxy, crab, and my personal favorite, the anchor troll. I like Craxy. <laughs> <laughs> the itsy bitsy Craxy Aww. went up the spider. That is adorable. Went up the spider? He went up the spider route. <laughs> the Craxy route? Wow. <laughs> well, I was trying to think of something else to say and the spider came out. Well, that's the song. My cleverness ran out halfway <laughs> through the song. The legend of the Kraken started with Norwegian sailor folklore, and it said that when fishermen row a few miles out from the coast on a summer day with calm water, they should normally have depths of about 460 to 900 or 590 feet. If they randomly have a more shallow depth of 115 feet, you can assume that the Kraken is there, just right below them, and the cause for the more shallow depth. Okay. If the fishermen notice that the kraken is rising, then they have to hightail it out of there because the kraken's going to rise above the water approximately a quarter of a mile, covered in seaweed. Mm. And then it will thrust its shiny tentacles out of the water, and they're usually as large as the ship. Thrusting. I guess I'm confused. (laughs) (laughs) So it sounds like my um, Norwegian ancestors thought that this was real. They did. And they they passed it down it. to you. And they did it so anyway. I'm kind of confused why you guys say it's not real. Well, that's true. I mean, I didn't say that. That's what Google said. No, no, no. Whenever I said, isn't the Kraken real? You. Oh. Personally, we're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, it falls in the cryptid category. So whatever we want to take from that. So um, I believe in a lot of things scripted Yeah, that Lindsay does not. So I'm going to say Kraken's going to be one of them. I like that. I think there's a giant sea squid. That thrusts its tentacles out of the water. So it likes to thrust let's, shiny tentacles. Let's get this straight. Nessie, real. Real. Bigfoot. Mm, I haven't committed to Nessie, okay. but Bigfoot, yeah. Bigfoot, Obviously. Kraken. Who else mm-hmm. are you saying is real? Mothman? Probably Mothman. Aliens. Aliens. Aliens, yeah. I I guess they could be counted as cryptids. I kind of count them separate. Yeah, because they're real. So <laughs> <laughs> They are us. <laughs> they have no. rights too, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Extraterrestrials. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Call them by their correct names. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, after. <laughs> I just want to know where we stand <laughs> on the cryptids. Are ghost pants real? What's real? I would probably take Ghost Pants more seriously if he had a different name. <laughs> he does. It's a Fresno Nightcrawler. That's better, <laughs> but like still. Pants. Fresno Nightcrawler is like, come on, a guy. All right. So after he sh- thrusts his shiny tentacles out of the water, he disappears by usually taking the ship down with him. Either he wraps the arm. <laughs> what did I say? S- sing it. I oh, yeah. Down <laughs> with the ship. I was ready. <laughs> She wanted to sing I it. I missed it. <laughs> Lindsay think that's, thinks that's Celine Dion. It's not. <laughs> you said it. I thought that once. 
Let's move past it. I recognize that is not Celine Dion. <laughs> You're very passionate. I also said that while intoxicated, I should not be held to those things. No, you didn't. You were at work. Nuh-uh. <laughs> you and I were at work back when we worked together. We went up to the... To the place where we get food and okay. we heard it over the over the intercom and yes. you're like oh that's Celine Dion and I said <laughs> no I was not drunk so you're not at all drunk sober. not oh, even a little alright well he will be pulled down by his ship <laughs> he's pulling down the ship <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> or the he's, ship would be pulled down he's singing I will pull down the ship <laughs> so either he pulls it down with his enormous shiny tentacles which I'm sure are fabulous Blowing <laughs> holographic. So he's got his tentacles. His uh, tentacles. Because where's the ship? Where's the ship? There's the ship. <laughs> there you are. You're coming with me. Guy. <laughs> Please don't include any of this. I'm gonna tickle you. I'm gonna get you, little guy. <laughs> Come here, shippy, shippy, ship. You like those tentacles? <laughs> I think that's what he did. <laughs> we killed Boydston. <laughs> Listen, the kraken is a ferocious beast. <laughs> I'm scary. I'm a big scary kraken. <laughs> I'm a slithering snake. <laughs> slither, slither. <laughs> slither, slither. Oh. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. <laughs> He's a ferocious beast. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not going to cut any of that. <laughs> not even a second. <laughs> oh god <laughs> this was the shit you see when he's like mm-hmm. this is the shit mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna get you <laughs> I feel like I should turn away <laughs> that scream was less out of people going down <laughs> Well, okay. So, <laughs> my cheeks. Anyhow, um, you you get the point. We get the point. The ship is going down. <laughs> the ship's going down. Because of the tentacles. Either by the shiny tentacles or because of this enormous vortex that is created when the Kraken goes underwater. And that's the scary part about it. Uh, yes, we see those in the movies. The- like, it's like a toilet bowl. Yeah. All right. One of the first known descriptions of the Kraken was by an Italian writer in the year of 1700. The author describes a massive fish, which may had many horns or many arms, or maybe both. We don't know. <laughs> fish with horns. <laughs> or arms. <laughs> could be a horn. Could be an arm. <laughs> they also made sure to differentiate this creature from a sea serpent. Mm. They're different. Okay. Okay. 1753. Author Eric... Mm, Pentopodon. Pentopodon. I don't know where the emphasis is. Pen. Pontopodon. Um, I'm not even trying. Pantoprazole. Right. <laughs> that sounds like a medication. <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, he wrote a book and it was titled. <laughs> this guy wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> the Natural History of Norway. Mm-hmm. It's, <laughs> yes. And he popularized this word the kraken to the english speaking world he claimed that sometimes the creature was mistaken for a group of small islands with fish swimming in between them so sometimes fishermen would go ahead and take the risk of fishing over the kraken since there were so many fish they'd get a ton of them like obviously Why even though it was risky the monster which resulted in a fun little saying that they say in norway referring to a plentiful catch and the saying is you must have fished the kraken okay the Kraken. Kraken? Kraken? Of course, there is always the risk of the semen. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> the minute sea. <clears throat> the minute sea being engulfed by the whirlpool that's created by the Kraken as it goes underwater. People were wondering why they wouldn't see it for several months. And they were like, well, the Kraken is feeding. This is why. So um, it would feed for a few months. Then it'd spend a few months emptying its excrement. And it's thought that maybe the excrement attracted a bunch of fish. That's why the fish always went around. And they also think it could have been maybe similar to the ink discharged by a cephalopod. Cephalopod. <laughs> Cephalopod, the giant squid. <laughs> Where the hell did I get that? Cephalopod, cephalopod, discharged by a cephalopod, like squidward, <laughs> like a squid. S- squidward, yes. 
well, Squidward falls into the cephalopod group. Yeah. 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 He is a cephalopod. A cephalopod, not a cephalopod. All right. Sometime during Pontopadon's life, there had possibly been a young kraken that had died and washed upon the shore. Um, and he wrote that it had really long arms and guessed that maybe it crawled like a slug. But um, as I was writing this, I was like, this doesn't make sense because slugs don't have arms. How, how is this happening? Uh, oh. um, their entire body is arms. Kind of like an octopus, like <laughs> how I'd imagine an octopus would do. Like the octopus <laughs> would use its arms to propel itself. And it might look like a slug. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I think it. that's what happened. <laughs> so this prompted him to start taking notes about which creatures he thought might be candidates for the cracking. Because some people at that time were like, huh, maybe this is actually a squid. I don't know. But he was like, I'm going to take some notes and think of some other candidates. Okay. So he thought maybe it was a, maybe it was a crab. Uh, maybe it was a squid. He was like, I don't really know. And then later on, he described it as an octopus or starfish. A starfish. Okay. So the arms. <laughs> <laughs> it was Patrick. Uh, we got all the creatures. Where is Mr. Krabs? <laughs> 1802, a French malacologist. What is that? Study of the sea. Study mm. of um, um, mammals and ecology. Mollusks. <laughs> Mollusks. Like okay, that's snails, very slugs, clams, and cephalopods. Well, he studies them, or he did, because it was a long time ago. He's dead. Eighteen hundred. He's dead. <laughs> uh, he basically identified two species of giant octopuses, which I thought was really funny because I didn't know the plural octopus was octopuses. It's I not it was, octopusy. I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was octopi. Uh, I can't. No, I knew. I knew you were going there, and I said, "Let's try to reel it back and say octopi before she says it." But no, you got it out. <laughs> I saw where your brain was going. I could not stop it. I'm so sorry, people. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> well, two different octopuses existed, according to this malacologist. And uh, the first one was the colossal giant, which killed was a man killer and ripped apart shipwrecked people and divers. Um, and <laughs> the kraken octopus, which was the most gigantic animal on the planet and basically made the colossal one look absolutely tiny. So Monfort provided eyewitness examples of a group of sailors who encountered the colossal octopus and drew a picture to represent it. Basically, it's the octopus attacking a ship, which if you Google uh, Kraken right now, that's what you're going to see, is this drawing of a giant octopus, which is basically the size of one of their biggest warships at the time. Based on his research, he made a pretty bold hypothesis regarding 10 warships that were lost in 1782. He proposed that the ships were basically destroyed as a result of several octopuses. Also, well, obviously, that was the reason that those ships went down. It wasn't because they, you know, ran into a storm or something. No, that's Not logical. All right. 1813, a ship called Niagara uh, was en route to New York and logged a sighting of a marine animal floating on top of the water, approximately 200 feet long, covered in shells, barnacles. Hmm. And had a bunch of birds floating on top. So it was obvious that this creature was dead. In 1830, our friend Alfred, <laughs> Alfred Lord Tennyson, wrote the poem, The Kraken. And I only read you the first little portion. So go read it yourself. It was beautiful. Thank you. Um, basically, he describes a huge sea creature that lived in the depths of the ocean and rose up only to attack ships. So basically, is the Kraken real? Obviously, yeah. Obviously, no. We're not really sure. No, we're sure. <laughs> I mean, here's what I will say, that we've only explored 5% of, of the ocean. The sea. Facts. Yes, the ocean so, is terrifying. I will say that there is a definite possibility that we just haven't seen the Kraken yet. I mean, I get it. Absolutely, I get it. So <laughs> although squids may not be a half mile long, they're still pretty big and they could probably square up with a whale. That's what I'm saying. So like people are like, is it a whale? Is it a squid? I don't know. But the squids are clearly bigger than most whales, these giant squids. Yeah. So there's at least three known occasions when squids attacked a ship. So selling for the three squid, they lost their life to the ships of or the propellers of the ships. Mm. Um, but it does prove that they will do it. They'll go up to the surface and attack a ship. So was it a squid? Maybe the kraken is a giant squid. 
but the giantest squid to exist. And maybe it is 200 feet long. That is big. We don't know. 200 feet long is big. The biggest one we have seen is like 30 feet long. <laughs> yeah. That's huge. It's still pretty big, but 200 feet? Damn. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you liked my surprise story dedicated to you. <sighs> Thank since you. Since you requested it. I enjoyed your cryptid story. I love all cryptids. I love hearing about them. We don't hear enough about the Kraken, honestly. We really don't, except like... Release the Kraken. Release the Kraken. <laughs> Everybody yes. knows that. Yes. Now we know it's real. Now we know it's been confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to our Smorgasbord Cryptid episode. You can always find us at thetipsyghost.com with our socials linked from there or send us an email at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. Uh, cryptid. <laughs> Settler. <laughs> <laughs> the English language has no rules, is what you said. That's true. I make you them win. up as I go. You win. <laughs> Please give us a five star warning. And it- nope. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. They're the worst. <laughs> five star warning. <laughs> five X's. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Stay away from them. Um, please give us a five star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it and it really does help. All right, guys, thanks so much. We will catch you next week. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>